Hey guys, my name is Hiroko Murakami, back with Novaj Academics. Today we'll be continuing with topic C2, Wave Modeling in IB Physics. Okay, so we've talked about C1 oscillations until last time and simple harmonic motion. So we're going to officially be talking about waves and the types of waves that we encounter in uh, IB Physics. Let's start with what is a wave. And a wave is defined as propagation of disturbance in a regular pattern through a medium or space. Note that this disturbance that they're talking about is energy. So by definition, wave is a propagation of energy in a regular way through like oscillations, okay? And uh, well, I put uh, like an ocean wave. So an ocean wave would definitely be considered a wave because it carries energy with it, right? So if I'm sitting on a the beach then I'm, and I get hit by a wave, then I'm getting hit by a transfer of energy through this medium of water. Right. Another one is like this rope thing. If you go on the gym and you do exercise like this, then you're sending wave through these ropes to whatever that's holding it. Right. So the, whatever that's holding it is receiving the energy from your arm through these waves. OK, so the first type of wave that I'm going to talk about is transverse wave and transverse wave is a type of mechanical wave. Um, so mechanical wave is, would, would be the broader category. And a perfect example of what a transverse wave is, is the, in, the gym example that I gave earlier, where you pull the rope up, down, up, down, up, down. And what happens? Well, the ropes start to go up, down, up, down, creating this wave-like pattern, right? And what's going on is you have the oscillations of the rope going up, down, up, down, up, down, right? So each part of this is going up, down, up, down, creating this wave. Now, Here's what defines transverse wave. The transverse wave defi definition is when the energy propagation is perpendicular to the oscillation or the displacement. So note that the displacement of the ropes is going up down. Okay, but the movement of energy is being propagated from point A to point B. Because remember, the definition of a wave is it carries energy to a certain place, right? Now, second type is a longitudinal wave. And the longitudinal wave is not perpendicular, it's parallel. So energy is being moved this way, which means displacement has to also follow that pattern. And now a perfect example is here where you have these coils. So if I uh, compress the coil and let go of it, then what happens? Well, you're going to have a series of compressed and non-compressed regions creating a wave-like phenomenon, right? So as a perfect example, if I were to try and draw what's going on, like a, like a wave... Uh, thing that we've always been doing before. This part would be the max, and this would be the max, but in a negative way. So I'm going to call it minimum. So it looks like this, and so forth, so on. So here is a compression, here is the rarefaction. Okay, now another perfect example of a longitudinal wave is a sound wave. We're going to talk a lot more in detail about sound wave a bit later. But before we do that, let's talk about wave characteristics. So up until last video, we've already covered period and frequency, right? And we've also actually already talked about wavelength and velocity before. Uh, this was done in topic B1. Um, now, period, of course, is defined by uh, the time taken for one oscillation. And frequency is the inverse of period, right? Now, velocity can be modeled as frequency times it by wavelength, okay? Now, you might be asking, okay, what is wavelength? Give me a refresh on what is wavelength. Well, it's the length between two crests. And what are crests? It's these peak points. So these are what we call crests. Okay, now these bottom parts are called troughs. Okay, and well, you can take the wavelength to be between two crests or two troughs. They're both the same thing, right? There's one thing you have to be careful though, is if you wanna take from the middle part, then you need to make sure that it's after one complete cycle, right? Because if I take two consecutive parts, that's only half a cycle. You need until the, the full cycle to quantify it as a wavelength, okay? So just be careful of that. So using those uh, equations, let's do a practice problem. So pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, so let's start with part A. They're saying that uh, five crests are separated by a distance of 9.6. So if I were to try and visualize one, two, three, four, five, this is 9.6 meters, right? So if I want to find between two crests, 
How many are there? There are four of them, right? So I just have to do 9.6 divided by four. Wavelength is 9.6 divided by four, 2.4 meters, okay? I'm gonna erase this, let's do part B. What's the period? Okay, well, we take the second information. So they're saying 12 waves pass during a time of one minute. So I need to do one minute divided by 12 waves because I want per wave how much time it took. So period is equal to one minute divided by 12 waves. I need it in seconds. Part C. Frequency is inverse of period. And D, the speed of the wave. How do I get the speed of the wave? This, right? Okay, I hope that's uh, clear. Now let's talk about sound wave. I mentioned before that sound wave is the perfect example of a longitudinal wave. And you might be wondering, okay, how? And you might also be wondering how is sound made because it's such a concept that's so normal to us about what sound is that we don't actually think about how it's made specifically. For example, I'm talking right now, but you might be wondering how am I making that? We don't really think about it. But sound wave is made by pushing air and creating center of compressions and rarefactions. And so why is it pushing air? Well, as a perfect example, I hope may maybe you have these uh, speakers at home or maybe you've seen your friends have them or something like that. Every speaker is equipped with these silicone, very flexible material circular thing. And that, it vibrates, right? When the speaker is on, it vibrates. And while it's vibrating, it's actually pushing the air at a certain rate. In fact, this rate of vibration or the frequency of vibration is literally the sound wave's frequency, okay? So the sound wave is created by pushing air molecules and when they compress and refract, then you have a wave-like phenomenon like this, okay? And the same thing, it can have a velocity, it can have period, it can have frequency, and it can have a wavelength as well. All of these characteristics are true for sound waves as well. And uh, you might be wondering, okay, what about earbuds? Earbuds don't look like they have these. Well, they actually do. It's this small, tiny little thing here. And you might also be wondering, okay, how do we make sound? Obviously, we don't have these silicone circular thing in our throat, right? Well, how we produce sound is through our Adam's apple, right? So we have a circular thing in our throat that vibrates with our air. We're pushing air out of our lungs when we talk, right? So that's how we create sound as well, okay? And speaking of, the frequency and amplitude are also very important in terms of pitch and loudness. So sound can vary in terms of pitch, right? I can have a high tone, high tone, or a low tone, right? And these, they're called pitch, a high pitch or a low pitch, and that depends on the frequency of vibration of the Adam's apple that I was talking about, right? And so try right now with me. If I try to decrease my voice to the point where I can't really do it, it's go down like this. I hope you heard that vibration, like the frequency decreases to a point where you can actually hear the intervals between uh, vibrations. So high pitch, high frequency. And also loudness corresponds to the amplitude. So as an example, I can have like this, right? And I can measure the wavelength and also calculate the frequency with it, right? The amplitude, well, what if I have another voice, another one like this? Well, here's the thing, their frequency is the same because guess what, their wavelength is the same, which means their pitch is the same, but the loudness is different because one has a bigger amplitude than the other. Okay, so those are two distinctions and you might be asked in paper one, multiple choice. So just be careful of that. Okay, so let's do a practice problem. So pause the video and give this one a try. So wavelength is equal to V over F. Make sure it's an SI unit. So that's 338 meters per second divided by 196 Hertz. 1.72 meters of wavelength. Let's do B. If a longitudinal compression wave of the same frequency has a wavelength of this in steel, determine the speed, same frequency. Now we change it to 26.1 meters. Now it becomes 
5,115.6 meters per second. Part C, explain why the wave speed is greater in steel than in air. Okay, so why does speed of sound travel faster through steel than through air? Well, it's because in air you have loose air particles, right? But then in steel, the energy propagates through the densely packed steel atoms, right? And so it's easier for a wave to propagate through steel than through air, okay? So just like sound was wave, light is also a wave. And we've already actually talked about this uh, briefly in topic B1. So if you haven't, you can go check that out, but I'm gonna give you a refresher. Light is an electromagnetic wave. Why is it called an electromagnetic wave? It's because it has two components. One is electric field oscillation and the other is magnetic field oscillation. You don't really need to know about the details of them and why they have those two. It's just, you need to just accept that light has two components. And also one more thing you need to accept, which is the speed of light in vacuum or air is three times 10 to the power of eight. This is in your data booklet. So if light also is a wave, can we have different frequency and different wavelength in light as well? And the answer is yes. And that's actually quite important. We have so many applications taking advantage of the fact that frequency and wavelength can vary, especially through color, right? Each color like red corresponds to a certain frequency and each color like violet or blue corresponds to another frequency, okay? And one more thing is that if speed is constant, meaning velocity is constant, then if I change frequency, then wavelength has to change accordingly. So if frequency goes up, wavelength goes down. If frequency comes down, wavelength goes up. Okay, so just keep this in mind. Now, why do I talk about this? Because this varying frequency is really important for applications in our everyday life. So we've already talked about the visible light spectrum right now, right here. You have red, yellow, uh, green, light blue, blue, violet, right? These are actually in this frequency spectrum. It's from 400 nanometers wavelength to 700 nanometers wavelength. So red corresponds to 700, violet corresponds to 400, okay? Of course, I can find a frequency as well because frequency is C divided by 400 nanometers. Same thing here, frequency is C divided by 700 nanometers. But here's the thing, that visible light that I just talked about is only a smidge of the entire spectrum that we can have. So I said it's from 400 to 700 nanometers. Well, I can have anywhere from 10 to the power of negative 16 to 10 to the power of eight meters of wavelength. So the spectrum is in a much crazier magnitude than this very small uh, visible light spectrum. So what are the others? We have radio waves, we have microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. And you might be saying they, they kind of sound similar. Well, first because we've already talked about them in topic B, but also because things like radio waves, microwaves, that's something we use in our everyday life. So we actually take advantage of this property. So for example, radio waves, let's say you have an FM radio in your car, right? What's happening? Well, you have a cell tower somewhere that's sending signals, those frequency radiations everywhere. And your car, pick, it picks it up. Your car picks it up. Your car has a, equipped with a transmitter. It interprets the, the radio waves. By the way, we can't see it, but it's invisible, but your car interprets it and changes into sound and it's played in your car. How about microwaves? Well, turns out it's the ideal frequency to rotate water molecules. That's why we use it in quite literally microwave to heat food up. The water molecules in the food, they rotate, they cause friction, they cause heat and your food warms up. Infrared, well, we can use it for like night vision goggles. UV light, we use it to kill bacteria, right? It's bad for your skin, that's why we wear sunscreen, but it's good for killing bacteria. So we use it to kill bacteria and virus in water. X-ray, that's pretty self-explanatory, right? We use it in X-ray screening to see whether you broke your bones. How does that work? Well, the invisible radiation in the X-ray region penetrates your skin and uh, only your bone absorbs and interacts with it. So when you put it on your screen, you can only see the bones and you can see if you're, you fractured anything, right? Last but not least, gamma rays. Well, I'm not gonna dig too deep because we cover it in topic E. They are highly, highly dangerous. They are highly, highly energetic. They can give you cancer in, in seconds and kill you. Um, and that's because they are very high in energy. So one more thing to talk about is the fact that radio wave, very safe, microwave, pretty safe, infrared, a little bit safer, 
visible light spectrum is fine, but UV gets toxic for your skin, X-ray becomes really toxic for your body, and gamma ray can kill you. Okay, so as the energy goes up, the more toxic it is for your body, meaning you can't be exposed to it for a long period of time. Okay, and so the sunlight has all of these. So maybe this one has a frequency of 500 hertz. Maybe this has a frequency of much higher, 10 to the power of 5 hertz. Maybe this has a slower frequency, right? And you might be wondering, okay, what's the distribution? Does it look like a normal distribution like this? Well, we've actually already covered this in topic B, but solar radiation looks like this, where most of it is infrared, visible, and UV, and very, very, very tiny amount is for the rest, gamma, x-ray, microwave, and radio, okay? So for those, we actually create our own radio waves and uh, send it for our practical use for phone calls, for Wi-Fi, internet, Bluetooth, all of those stuff. Pretty cool, right? So let's do practice problem to finish this topic up. I know it's a very short topic, but it's because C2 is quite literally the shortest topic in IB physics. So uh, pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, so velocity is delta x over delta t. So delta t is delta x over v, which is 4.7 meters divided by speed of light. Bluetooth signal, that's speed of light. It's a radiation, so it's a speed of light, so. Let's do part B. Okay, how much time does it take for light to reach from sun to the earth? Same thing. It takes about eight minutes. The exact is 8.28 minutes, but they're saying till the nearest minute, so at eight minutes. Part C, let me just erase this. How much time does it take a radio signal to travel from Mar to Mars from Earth? Again, same thing. One eighty three seconds. Okay. All right. So we're gonna finish it here for topic C two. I know it's short, but literally the shortest topic. Next topic is C3, where it gets a little bit trickier on wave phenomena and you know diffraction, refraction, etc. Et um, we'll see you in the next video. And by the way, if you have any re requests on what kind of topics you want me to cover, or in general, not even just IB curriculum, but you know in general about TOK essay, IAs, etc. like that, then just leave down in the comments. And uh, yeah, when I have time, I can get back to them, okay? Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of video, then consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. We have a lot more lecture style video and content like this in our channel, so feel free to go check it out. Uh, if you're looking for additional guidances like one-on-one -on -one tutors in IB subjects, SAT, TOK essay, IAs, writing, etc., then uh, go to our website at novaedgeacademics.com, fill out the form, and we'll get in touch with us. In the meantime, we'll see you in the next video.